this is my presentation on housing in Denmark. Um, today I'll be focusing on the current systems, what they're being used, and how it is changing in the changing climate in Europe. To start, we'll look at the demographics. Um, the population as of 2018 was just under 6 million people. High percentage of those people end up living in the capital city of uh, Copenhagen. This is where I studied abroad. Um, but I'll really focus on the fact of a variety of culture. The ethnic groups that make up Denmark include um, mostly Danish people, which is primarily white people. Um, otherwise, they're identifying people who call them, or um, who identify, excuse me, as Turkish, as well Polish, Syrian, German, Iraqi, and Romanian. Um, note the increase in Syrian refugees after 2015. The political system in Denmark is a multi-party structure that has a constitutional monarchy. The current queen is Queen Margaret, as you see her on the right. Um, the uh, parliament is made up of many different um, parties. As of right now, it's just about 16 different parties. The group that won in 2015 um, is the anti-immigrant Danish People's Party, and they won 21% of the vote, which is very significant, and they therefore have power. Um, the current welfare system, the, excuse me, the current system used in political, uh, political assets is social welfare system. This was focused on equal rights to social security for all system or all citizens, excuse me. And then the Scandinavian welfare model is how they implement that, and that's through um, increased importance on education, social security, and health services. The local authority will provide free elementary schools. Um, as well, they'll end up paying students to continue their studies into um, university and in high school. Um, students are uh, highly regarded. Social security is provided, if not waived, and all, pe all citizens um, end up getting this for free. Health services are universal, um, and the Ministry of Health is able to supervise and provide benefits through municipalities and regional government level. The economic system currently in use in Denmark is open, uh, free trade based. Their main exports are in pharmaceuticals, maritime shipping, renewable energy, and agriculture. They're a member of the European Union, and as of 2017, their GDP um, reached just about $287 billion. The background of housing, the size of the nation, is just about 43,000 square kilometers. The national budget is just under $170 billion. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that um, budget within housing. But spending on housing um, among the people is just about $138.144 billion. And you can see the rise and fall in that um, in the provided graph. The housing or the spending in uh, Danish housing 20% of all housing in Denmark are considered not for profit. Um, however, those um, that are not considered these not for profit housing um, are usually costing about 14% higher than what they would in the United States. The types of housing that are recognized by the government include social housing, which would be these not for profit housing that Denmark is spending 20% of its budget on, rented private sector house. Uh, cooperative housing, which would be something like a co-op or um, similar to what we have in the United States. Freehold flats, um, which is essentially also not included, very private. Um, as well, they also offer housing for the elderly, which falls into the Scandinavian social welfare model. The major housing programs. There's one that I'm really f um, focused on, which was released in 2017, which is called One Denmark Without Parallel Society, No Ghettos in 2030. Um, this is 22 initiatives within five themes that um, have been heavily critiqued. The five themes that they look at are physical demolition, conversion of vulnerable residential areas, strengthened police efforts um, to increase security, what they call a good start for all children and young people, and then increasing government follow-up. Um, this has so far been considered fairly um, aggressive towards refugee, refugee populations, and it kind of follows the public attitude on housing. These government-based initiatives um, are encouraging assimilation. However, they have been internationally considered racist and Islamophobic. The public view um, in Denmark 
towards refugee populations also have reflected these racist and Islamophobic views based on um, international uh, critique. And then uh, there has been some affiliation of the um, social housing or public housing in Denmark as being um, affiliated with students and elderly populations. However, it should be note the percentage of people who are living in um, Denmark uh, as asylum seekers. It has significantly gone down since 2015 um, after some of these rules have been coming in and the one Denmark pot, um, proposal occurred in 2017, which is also when there's a drastic decrease in um, applications for housing and application for citizen status in Denmark. This is just a little bit of my understanding from my research about um, Denmark. There is one unique milestone in housing that I also want to mention is the fact that the Danish government does reserve 25% of rentals for vulnerable communities such as refugees um, or people who are considered poor, unemployed, or disabled. Um, and the average cost for these would be about 46,000 Danish kroner per year. Uh, and the ratio of kroner to um, American dollar is about seven, um, one to seven, or one dollar, one US dollar is seven Danish kroner. Um, it's also interesting to note the number, number of social housing um, units in Denmark and the percentage of um, how this has been increasing since uh, 1939. That was a little bit about my research and interest in Danish housing. Um, feel free to go ahead and email me if you have any additional questions. And I hope the audio on this actually does work. Thanks again.